uh, inspiration, it's not so much like... It, it was not like an image or something like this. It happened sometimes that I have an image and I try to build up a story around this. But this time it was not the case. I was talking with Jean Desforêts, who is now my producer, but who was not at the time. And we we're talking about um, a cannibal movie that had just been released or something. And we talk about cannibalism in films. And I told him that for me... I didn't understand why people did not make movies with the cannibal as the main character in order to uh, study um, how they become cannibal. It started to um, make sense with what I've done before, like my short and my TV feature, which work around um, body metamorphosis and um, transformations that always have some kind of moral uh, consequences afterwards in the building uh, of the character and of the character's models. And I thought that... Um, Cannibalism was very interesting because it's it's something that people would tend to reject as not being part of humanity. Uh, like they are, um, they, they, they qualify, they would qualify cannibals as being monsters or uh, inhumans. And I thought, yeah, that's weird because cannibalism is actually part of the three taboos of humanity with murder and incest. So if it's part of the three taboos of humanity, it means that it belongs to this humanity that is in us. And I think this is why people tend to repress it as not being their own because it's very scary uh, to, um, to, to, to be in touch with this part of humanity. The idea was to build up the empathy on the character since the very beginning of the movie. Because I, when you know that you're going, that she's going to commit such um, such an act at, in the middle of the movie, an act that could actually um, provoke rejection on the part of the audience, you really need to have your audience with her since the very beginning. So I decided to build up this context of hazing in the campus, because I thought hazing, it's something like it's an it's an establishment. It's anonymous most of the time you hear like a lot of different people with no faces yelling stupid orders or creating uh, like absurd rules um at her and she has to do it she doesn't know why and there is something like i knew that the audience would instinctively reject or rebel against and then root for her. I knew that it would resonate in a very uh, political and intimate way. She's not a vampire and she's not a werewolf. She's a real person. Sorry, the coming of age part and the genre part of, of the movie were always, for me, in the same um, yeah, gesture. What interested me at this moment um, of young teenage years or young adult years is that she really go through metamorphosis that is also uh, physical because your body changes and everything and also there is the, 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 um, the sexuality that becomes a stake in your life when it was not before and everything and, and you also get out of your, your parents' um, little shell and you start building up your own opinions about the world and so I think it, this whole theme of metamorphosis is incredibly cinematographic and it's incredibly genre cinematographic, if I can say, you know, it's very, because you can actually see it visually. I mean, you can see a body morph visually and we know what it means for the character, you know, it's really, really efficient. And this is why I love the grammar of body horror for that, because it's incredibly visual and incredibly relatable. Because again, we're not talking about fantasy things or um, another world that doesn't exist. It's something that I really believe in, that we can escape boxes in any way. My movie is not lab easily labelable. <laughs> of course, there are not a lot women filmmakers in the genre industry. I, 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 I don't believe that it's because women are less interested in the genre. I think it's actually not true. Uh, when you go to see a horror movie in a theater, you see a lot of women there. I have a lot of friends who are completely into horror. and everything. So for me, it's really mm, the, only, the only reason that I can, for me, can, that I can perceive is that maybe they're not taken seriously in this genre. This is something that I really don't, don't, I don't understand. We feel violence and anger as much as anyone else in this world. I mean, everyone does feelings of feelings and they belong to everyone. I, I think actually these things start to change because you see with Jennifer Kent, with Anna, Anna Lily Amarpour, I mean, you see more and more, I think, um, strong uh, female filmmakers interested in genre and trying to work on this. But I think we, sh we have to stop make, like, trying to make comparison like, oh, does it look like it's a woman that made it or does it look like a man that made it? 
I mean, they're just people making movies. That's nothing more than this, you know. David Cronenberg is a major influence in my life. There is something so uh, human in what he proposes, the way he sees uh, mortality, the way he sees the bodies, is for me, at the same time, incredibly distant, almost like a scientific distance that he has to it, but at the same time, incredibly um, rooted in, um, in a fear that you can feel him he wants to overcome, in a way, you know? And I really like, for example, the fact that he makes very few camera movements, especially in his early work, you know, around the bodies especially. It's very few camera, camera movements, and you, you have a lot of still shots that are actually pretty center-framed. And sometimes I think this frontality is really so that the audience cannot look anywhere else. Like, you can't lie to yourself. This is the human condition. We are all gonna putrefy putrif and die. And this is what it is. At the same time, you can also... Uh, you can also become a hybrid, you know, and this is also beautiful, monstrous, it's monstrous, but at the same time it's very hopeful to know that you can become another creature and everything. So I, I like this kind of, yeah, of, um, of hard look on mortality, but at the same time I've, with, with a lot of, um, of love for it. For me, the main goal was for them to, for the, the first thing is I want them to feel full afterwards, like after a good meal, you know. I really love movies, as I said, crossover movies, in which you go through many, many emotions. Like when you watch Kill List by Ben Whitley, you're like, every single moment, you're like, where am I going? What is it doing? Why am I laughing? Why am I scared? What is this movie and everything? You're like constantly questioning what you are seeing. And it makes you incredibly active because you're really, really like, you're, you're, you're a part of the, of, the, of the discovery of this movie, you're really part of it, with the characters who discover also the craziness of this world. This is brilliant because you're so alive afterwards. So this is really what I, I hope uh, the, the audience can feel um, at the end of my movie. Not trying to find answers immediately or like, oh, I got it or things like that. I, I, I think movies doesn't ha don't have to be easy, you know? The important thing is the impact they have on, on you afterwards and what traces they leave in you. Hey, Vale here. So, did you like that video? Well, keeping with the crime thriller genre, following, I have a list for you of some of the best crime movies based on true stories and events. Now, these movies are a double banger as you don't just get entertainment, but also the history of the crime and you get to know what really happened. The Wolf of Wall Street, based on the true story of Jordan Belfort. Monster, starring Charlize Theron, based on the serial killer Eileen Wuornos. American Gangster, starring Denzel Washington, based on the criminal career of Frank Lucas. Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas, based on the rise and fall of Lucchese crime family associate Henry Hill. M from 1931, believed to be based on the real life case of serial killer Peter Curtin. Zodiac, based on the notorious serial killer Zodiac. Rope from 1948, believed to be inspired by the real life mur murder of 14 year old Bobby Franks in 1924. Donnie Brasco, based on the true story of Joseph D. Pistoni, an FBI undercover agent. Alpha Dog, a drama based on the life of drug dealer Jesse James Hollywood. An American Crime, based on the true story of the torture and murder of Sylvia Likens by Indianapolis housewife Gertrude Banizuski. Catch Me If You Can, based on the real life of Frank Abagnale. What's your favorite real life based crime thriller movie? Let me know in the comments below. Keep up to date with all the latest releases by subscribing to our channel and checking the notification bell. See you next time.